All right, guys, welcome back. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit today about uh, some of the discussions that are going on about finding good techs and how hard it is. Um, let's get some light on. Uh, what I've I've thought about this a lot, and I've been I've been reading in these uh, these forums and such how you know guys are non-existent in the industry and you know they can never find good help and all this stuff. And I wanted to touch on it a little bit because I've been in this business a long time and I've been on both both sides of it uh, as a you know as an employee and as a shop owner. Uh, there's a lot to talk about here and there's a lot of points to be made and a lot of arguments to be made. But here's what it comes down to: a shop environment is a is a tough place to sustain because you have multiple personalities in the same place with egos. All right, nobody ever wants to be wrong, and that's a big problem in this industry. Um, you know, nobody ever wants to. Nobody ever wants to be outdone, so to speak. Right? Well, it's part of the game. Nobody knows it all. Uh, that's something that both sides of it need to understand. The employee, you know, as a tech, and the owner. Now, I want to tell you something that I haven't seen touched on very often on these uh, in these debates. A lot of shops have owners that do not have a clue as far as wrenching or diagnosing that's a fact there are plenty of guys out there and there are some guys out there who were techs or mechanics or whatever you want to call us years back and then they bought a shop of their own and they stopped turning wrenches over the years because they you know ran the business side of it and I'm gonna tell you this for those guys if you don't know it you fell behind all right what worked in 1970 or 1980 or 1990 does not work today for most vehicles. Uh, it is not the same approach to diagnostics as it was back then. Uh, this is, you know, a different world we live in, and that's a fact. So if you don't understand what the tech side of it is, it's going to be really hard for you to see eye to eye with the tech because you're going to think that whatever he tells you, he's just trying to get over or he's just uh, making up excuses for whatever. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just a mess. So that's, that's one aspect that I see that isn't touched on very often. Guys that own shops that do not have a clue uh, about working on vehicles, that's a problem. Now, on the other side of it, finding a good tech, uh, and that, that's... By definition, I mean, what is a good tech? Is that, you know, for your shop, it may be different from my shop. So, you know, a good guy for you may be a guy that can swing motors in two hours. You know, a guy for me would be a guy that can diagnose. Um, <coughs> you know, it all depends on what your shop is set up around now and what you're looking for, obviously. But my point is that uh, there's a lot of variables that go with things, okay? I know from one side of it, trying to hire a guy, uh, you have choices, right? Are you going to bring in a guy who's going to be more of an apprentice? He's going to start off doing, uh, as they're calling them now, lube techs, you know, to do oil changes and learn how to do other stuff and work their way up? Or are you going to bring in a guy who's already knowledgeable, that's been in the field and knows how to diagnose, knows his way around the shop, knows how to use the equipment? Uh, there's a difference. Because you're not going to pay a guy that knows everything uh, about a shop and is familiar with the environment and has experience, real experience. You're not going to pay him... 10 or $12 an hour and expect them to be happy. You're not going to bring a lube tech in that's going to learn and pay him $35 an hour. Okay, so there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of things to debate here, right? But here's where the problem comes in a lot of times. When you bring a guy in, you don't know what that guy's about, okay? Whatever he told you on his, uh, whatever resume he brought you, whatever he told you in the interview, all that crap kind of goes out the window until you have to know you have to see him in action you have to work with him and get a feel for the guy my advice is always to put people on a trial period uh, we've hired guys before uh, obviously you guys most of you guys know that it's only me and my partner now we're more comfortable that way for various reasons but if you're gonna hire somebody as we have in the past um, you know you have to know what the guy wants to do you have to be upfront with each other you have to know what he's capable of. You have to know his weaknesses. Uh, if you're a place like we always were, that we're willing to teach, uh, and you know, and to and to to get a guy uh, to level up, so to speak, 
um, that's a great thing. You know what I mean? There's a lot of guys out there that want to learn, that want to progress, and it's hard. It's very hard. Uh, it takes time, it takes effort, and it takes help from other techs that are experienced. If you're working in a shop and you find that the guys, if you're, you're a lower level guy, okay, that doesn't have experience, and you're working in a shop where guys are kind of shooing you away, you may want to find another place to work. Um, when I started, I knew nothing with electrical, okay? Now, you know, uh, I know a couple of things. The thing is that when I started, I was, uh, I, you know, I was working in a dealer. They would not train me. They would not, I mean, they let me in the shop. They let me work on cars, but they would not send me to training. They would not level, you know, let me learn to progress. Uh, it was very frustrating. I lasted four years and I quit. I ended up finding Joe through a mutual friend of mine of ours and um, a guy that worked for him at the time. And uh, I was Joe's shadow for the, uh, as, as many years as you could, as I could remember being there, you know, with him. Uh, a very knowledgeable technician, extremely, extremely good at diagno diagnosing vehicles um, and fixing things and just a great guy all around. Uh, you know, as a, as a person and as a tech, he was just amazing. Um, you know, he pushed me and he trained me, but I was willing. There's, there's a big difference today from in the stuff that I see. When you have a guy that comes in who wants to shadow uh, the owner, or well, I mean, he, he happened to be the owner, but he was also the, you know, the lead tech. I mean, you know, it is what it is, right? That's, that's the shop environment we were in. But Joe never shooed me away, never, uh, <clears throat> never made me feel like I was a dummy, like I didn't know anything, like, you know, even when I didn't. And I mean, trust me, when I started with him, my first day there, I looked around and what he was doing and the stuff they were working on, I was like, oh boy, I said, rut row raggy, I should get out of here. I don't know what I'm doing. I have no idea about any of this stuff. I was a young kid. Um, you know, I was never around stuff. I knew a test light. I mean, I didn't know anything about how to use a meter. I didn't know how to, you know, I had scoping, uh, scopes, meters, scan tools. Man, I, you talk about knowing basics. I knew basics. I knew nothing with this stuff. Um, a, you know, electrical wise, I was lost. In the dealer, I was doing, you know, basic work, uh, repairing, you know, parts changing, things like that after somebody diagnosed it. Uh, you know, but I mean, I had basic abilities. I knew how to do soldering. My father had taught me that as a kid, and I knew how to do some welding. Uh, you know, back, you know, my dad, I was always doing welding, so I mean, I, I knew how to do that kind of stuff, but, uh, you know, that's all repair-based, uh, hands-on stuff, right? When it got to like, yeah, you know, the, uh, the headlights don't work in that car, go check them out. I was like, uh, it has power, you know? I didn't know about ground, I didn't know checking, and I didn't know how to check any of this stuff. Load testing, I mean, forget it. So, what I'm getting at is... I shadowed Joe. I wanted to learn. Um, and I see being in these environments that some guys don't. They don't want to learn. They're, they're content with doing brake jobs or they're content with changing shocks and struts all day. Hey, you know what? More power to you. That's cool. Every, somebody's got to do it. I wasn't content with that. I, I didn't care about turning bolts and nuts and, and uh, that kind of stuff. I knew how to do it. Uh, hands on, I was always pretty decent with stuff. I just couldn't care less about it. Uh, swinging motors, nope, don't care about that. Uh, I wanted to know why and how things worked and how to diagnose them. Uh, and that's what Joe got me on the path to. He taught me a lot. Um, you know, I give him uh, more credit for, for getting me up to the level I'm at than anybody else in the industry, and that's the truth. Um, learning, learning the stuff that I learned from him uh, I learned more about critical thinking, I guess, and being able to being able to think outside the box with things. Like if you, you know, I remember even at a young age working with him, uh, I would get a, you know, pull a code, and the first thing I would do is try to familiarize myself. So I would go to the trouble chart, and everything was like check resistance, check this, check. And he's like, no, no, he's like, just come here. He's like, I'll show you, and he's like, get your test light or get your meter or whatever, and he would walk me through how to check it. And I was like, yeah, but how come it's telling me to do this, you know? And, and he was like, don't pay attention to that crap. He goes, that's, he says, those charts are terrible. <coughs> he was telling me this back 20 something years ago. So we all knew that it was garbage. And I, I even, even not having knowledge, 
uh, back then, I saw that it was garbage because it didn't make sense to me. It's, you know, it takes you a half hour to get the computer out. You know, it takes you another half hour to get to the other side of the harness you have to unplug. And now you're finding pins and you're, you know, you're checking resistance only to find out that it's good, that that has nothing to do with the problem or that the resistance test is a big fail and it's uh, not going to lead you to the problem. So we knew back then it was garbage. Um, you know, but this is the thing, like, I, I ended up lucky. I was lucky because I got into a shop with a guy who was willing to train me. And he never, he never belittled me, okay? And I see that in the shops, man. They, you know, call a guy an idiot. They talk bad to the guy. And then they expect the guy to just, you know, eat it and feel better about things. You know, he's going to go and just, he's going to do better now because you called him a moron or you told him he's a dummy or whatever. That's not the way you handle things, man. If you got a guy that wants to learn, you got to teach him and you got to guide him and you got to have patience with him. If you don't have that, hire a guy that's already knowledgeable and be willing to pay. That's the fact, okay? Uh, and don't treat that guy like he's a jerk either because he ain't gonna lay, he ain't gonna stay. Um, you know, it all depends on what you're looking to do. But my experience is I've hired guys over the years, we've had guys come in and work for us. Uh, well, in an interview they would say, you know, I would say, what are, you know, what are your strong points? You know, what do you think are, you know, you're weak in and this and that. And they would, you know, some of these guys would actually say to me, I could do everything. I had one guy tell me I could do anything you could do, but I could do it faster. He lasted about three days. I had to hire him just to find out. Uh, this is all, you know, it's just comical because nobody knows it all. You cannot walk into a shop and expect to be able to do every job proficiently and know everything that's going to come through the door. This, this business is crazy. You never know what you're going to find. But what you have to do is put your time in, be willing and dedicated to work, uh, show up, sober, uh, do the right thing, be prepared to train, be prepared to learn, and take learning from anywhere you can get it, okay? There, you can learn from anybody. You can learn from a guy who doesn't have the experience you have because he may know something you don't. It's that simple. Uh, don't ever take somebody for granted, okay, that the guy doesn't know anything or the guy, you know, whatever. There's, you'd be very surprised. What I, what I think is that as a whole, this industry is a mess in a lot of ways. Like I said, I touched on one point where you have shop owners that have no clue. That's an absolute fact. Then you have the other side of the spectrum like I had where you have a shop owner who's the tech. He understands, he gets it, he's willing to work with you. That's the bright side of it in my opinion. Because I could have easily ended up in another shop where the guy was a jerk or the guy, didn't, the guy thought he knew everything but he didn't, know, he didn't do anything the right way, right? So if that was the case, where would I, you know, I, I knew nothing, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think this guy knows it all, you know what I mean? And it's, it, that's, that's, a, that's a bad situation because that poor guy may get stuck in that shop learning everything to do the wrong way. And, you know, then later on he's going to think he has all this great experience and come to find out when, the, you know, when push comes to shove, he's not really as good as he thought he was. Uh, it happens. I never had that problem, I don't think, because I never thought I was that good to begin with. I just do what I do. Okay, I'm just a regular guy that goes to work every day and I try to, uh, I try to fix cars, do my best. Um, you know, that's always the way I'm going to look at it because we never stop learning. Uh, we're always students, always. Even the masters are students, believe it or not. Um, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot, uh, there's too much to know. There's too much to know. So my advice is if you're getting into this business, Try to find a shop that's willing to teach you and willing to work with you. Uh, you know, offer training, that'd be a bonus. Uh, pay well, you know, be fair, let's put it that way. Uh, you know, based on your ability and your work ethic, that counts, it all counts. Um, when I was working for Joe, there were nights, that, you know, there were times that uh, I would stay there late and work on stuff. You know, uh, I did it because I wanted to get it done. Uh, there were times that I was screwing up and Joe bailed me out, you know. Uh, it, was a it was a good situation, I think, uh, because there was, there was love there. There was, there was a camaraderie uh, when it all came down to it. And did we ever have problems? Yeah, I mean, we argued, we had things, whatever, but I think that's in any shop. I think that's in any environment where you're close, you're like family. You spend more time with these guys than you do with your family, let's face it. Uh, you know, you, you're at the shop, you, it's your second home. So 
you're going to have those moments of uh, conflict and, you know, frustration and just, you know, not seeing eye to eye or whatever. But you have to work through that. You have to be mature enough to understand that these things are going to happen. And uh, there's no reason to blow it out of proportion, I guess. You know what I mean? But a shop environment is not for everybody. And that is something you will find out if you're young and you're going into this environment, into this industry, you will find that out if you're not cut out for it. Believe me, you will know. You will get in there and you will say, what the hell am I doing here? It's the way it is. Um, you know, and if that's how you feel, don't, don't find something else to do. That's my honest advice to you because it's, you're not cut out for it. You have to be thick skinned. You have to be ready to work. You have to be willing to sacrifice a lot. Uh, I, you know, I go home from here and I still, uh, I'm online. I'm networking with other guys. I'm trying to learn. Uh, you know, we talk about uh, case studies, things that uh, came in that we saw that blow your mind, weird stuff. You're always learning, you know, and you get feedback from other guys that are experienced, and you kind of, you kind of try to learn, uh, from, you know, how their logic, you know, what their logic would be with this situation, and you know, you do the same for them. It's 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 a it's a big um, it's a big learning uh, ball, is what it is. You're just always learning. You never stop. But that's the key. As long as you don't say, as long as you're not stagnant, uh, you have you have uh, a good chance to do well, you know, and uh, you have a good chance to become a really good tech. But it takes work, man. It doesn't happen overnight. Uh, that's my honest take on it. So as far as finding good people to work, they're out there. You have to look. You have to dig. You have to weed them out. You have to weed out the the bad ones, okay? The ones that don't want to work. The ones that are lazy. The ones that don't want to learn. The ones that don't care, that are that have no pride in their work, those are guys that should not be in the industry. Plain and simple. Um, you know, if you got a guy that constantly leaves bolts loose on a car, uh, that's not a guy I want working for me. If you have a guy that comes into work, raring to go every day, and he wants to learn and he's always asking questions, that's a guy that you kind of you know he, he pays attention to detail. That's a guy you want. Uh, that's a guy that has a head for this. Um, but it doesn't, it's, it's not for everyone. And uh, I see that, you know, I see a lot of guys that get into this industry, young guys, I mean, that have gone and watched The Fast and the Furious one time too many, and they think that they're going to go build, uh, you know, I don't know, six second uh, street cars or whatever in this industry. And that's, you know, it's all fun and games and stuff, but uh, <coughs> that's not realistic. So you got to, you got to really, uh, you got to love what you do. That's it. And, you know, uh, you have to be in the right shop. That's really what it comes down to. You have to be happy where you are. Uh, the owner is going to make that uh, or break it, in my opinion. If you do the right thing and you know in your heart you could say, I go home every night and I could sleep because I, I went to work and I put my, my day in. I did what I was supposed to do. I tried my best. Uh, you know, I work hard. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to learn whatever. And you're still unhappy because whatever the guy, you know, the way the way the shop environment is, then you need to move on. Uh, don't become stuck in a in a situation just because you know. Don't get comfortable. Let's put it that way. Um, if you're in a good place, stay there. If you're in a place where you're just kind of going through the motions and you're not happy, you're not progressing, you're not getting anywhere, you never have room for for uh, uh, you know further development, then you need to move on because getting stale in this business is the one thing you don't want to do. And to the shop owners, I'll say this, you know, you guys, a lot of guys out there make, uh, you know, make the mistake of um, not giving guys an opportunity when they should, too. That's another thing. They'll hire guys and, you know, they'll try them out for a week and just, you know, they're not, you know, the guy's still trying to get familiar with the environment, that shop, that, you know, those group of guys that he's working with, whatever, your system of doing things. And right away, you're like, oh, I'm not happy with it. You know, this guy's not working out. You don't, you don't even know the guy yet. You got to give him some time. Give it a month. See what happens. If you're still unhappy for whatever reason, you know, and and instead of yelling and uh, talking down to guys, you know, treat them like human beings. Uh, you know, show some respect. Uh, you know, talk things out a little bit. You know what I mean? Try to explain if you're not happy with something, why. You know, listen, we got to do things this way. This is how we want it done. Hear the guy out. Maybe the guy has a good idea. Maybe he does things the way he's doing it for a reason. So keep all that stuff in mind. I mean, there's, you know, there's so many levels to this, so many things that you can debate. 
But I just wanted to touch on it a little bit because I've been hearing a lot about how hard it is to find good guys. Well, you get what you pay for. <clears throat> you get what you pay for. That's it. And, um, you know, if you hire a lube tech, expect to have a lube tech. If you hire a, you know, a master tech, then, uh, you know, he should perform. You're going to pay. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.